y'all welcome back to my channel my name is Evelyn and huh, it's finally winter break <sighs> So I have been working very hard to stay afloat during my third semester of college and I have not been successful at reading physical books. I have read so many ebooks because they're on my phone and they're super easy to read. I've even read multiple audiobooks this semester, but like unless it was for class, I really honestly did not succeed in reading physical books, which is funny because I ended up with a lot of pre-orders <laughs> um, that just sort of sat on my bookshelf. I read two arcs, which you saw in the reading vlogs, and then I read Cemetery Boys, my physical copy of Cemetery Boys. And that was it. That was all, that was all I got to. Um, which means that even though I have had three of my most anticipated books of the year, for several months, a couple of them. Haven't touched them, haven't picked, well, no, I've started two of them and didn't finish them. Um, but here they are. And this is a reading vlog. So first we have We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. This is a historical fiction set during World War II and it follows 14 different teens who are all in the same Japanese incarceration camp. Tracy Chi is the author of one of my favorite fantasy trilogies ever and so I of course was highly anticipating reading this book and I've had it and I just haven't read it. It literally got nominated for National Book Award and I was like ah oh, man I'm so excited and I still didn't read it so here we are today. We'll be reading this as well as Blaze Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz. This is a contemporary fantasy novel where the main character is playing this sport called Blaze Wrath. It's a dragon based sport and there is an evil dragon who does not want the game to go on. I have started this and I got a pretty significant way through it and then I just stopped reading. So we will be restarting this and finishing it. And then last but certainly not least, literally my most anticipated book of the year, Among the Peace and Briars by Ashley Poston. This is a fantasy novel. It's set in this kingdom that is being sort of overrun by this forest and the main character has to go figure out how to save it by journeying through the woods. It's a quest. I love a quest. There's like a talking bear and a fox turned into a human and like all of the things that I long for in a book basically from one of my favorite authors and I still haven't touched it. Haven't read a single word. So these are the three books and by the end of this video I will have read of them. That is the goal. Yeah! <laughs> Hello! Um, you're in an awkward spot, but here I am telling you that I am most of the way through, we are not free. I went over to my grandma's house today. Um, she's part of our little family bubble, the four of us. And I helped her with prep for Christmas meal tomorrow. And then I spent several hours on her sofa reading. And I didn't bring my camera, so I didn't film it. But I am almost done, relatively speaking, with we are not free. And I'm really enjoying this. So each chapter is from the point of view of a different character and they are all connected in the fact that like they all know each other or like each one of them knows another one of them at least. And it starts with these kids in Japantown and San Francisco before they are taken away to the camps and then it follows them through the journey and because they all know each other you do 
sort of get to see where they're all ending up. So um, I've gotten all the way to Italy, basically, is where we're at right now. And it's... Oh my god. she She's so good at tugging on my heartstrings. I have teared up multiple times reading this. It's it's a lot, but it's so good. And I really want to see this um, on screen. Like, this is this could be adapted so well. Uh, those are my thoughts so far. So, get back to you later. This is why I don't... <laughs> I'm so warm, media. I don't like it. I mean, I like the book. I love the book. The book is very well written. I am too soft for the book. I am too soft for the book. And this character, I get too attached. I get too attached. <laughs> Human beings are terrible. I gotta keep reading. I can't stop now. I want to stop. Because I know that I'm gonna cry more. I'm gonna get hurt more. But like, that's so small compared to everything. God, she's so good at making me cry. Well, that was a really heart-wrenching thing to read on Christmas Eve. Oh boy. I knew this book was going to break me, which is probably part of why I put off reading it so long. Um, oh my god. As you saw, I spent the final chunk of this book just crying uncontrollably. I couldn't keep myself from crying. Um, Tracy Chi is such a master of language and this is, it's so good. I don't, I don't go for historical fiction. I especially don't go for war narratives, but I knew that I needed to read this book because of how much I respect her and because this is a story that she has put so much time and care into telling and I'm so glad that I read it and I would recommend it 100% it is gorgeous and that's part of what makes it so heartbreaking and I loved every single one of the 14 point of view characters which is insane to say she's so good <sighs> uh but right now i need something that hopefully won't break my heart so i think we're gonna jump straight into restarting blaze wrath games because i need me some dragons to fill the hole in my soul <laughs> Okay, so I, like I said earlier in the video, started Blaze Roth Games a while ago, got a little ways into it, and then had to stop because I ran out of time to read things. So I will just be starting over. It won't take me that long to catch up to where I was. I just need a quick little refresher of like what went down at the beginning of the book, and then I will be right into it. So. <laughs> Hi, it's voiceover Evelyn coming to you post filming this vlog because I didn't say enough about Blaze Wrath Games. I really, really love this book. It's about dragons, yes, but it's also about identity and honoring where you come from. Lana, the main character, 
is on the Blaze Wrath team for Puerto Rico. <laughs> it's the first time that Puerto Rico has been able to compete in this international competition and she wants to make her country proud but she hasn't actually been back there in a very long time and so <laughs> it is sort of suggested to her that maybe she does not belong on this team and her own worries about not being Puerto Rican enough sort of compound and she struggles to bond with her teammates because she is sort of deep down convinced that they don't think she belongs there either. But when it mattered, Lana was able to stand up and take a stand and say, not only am I going to represent Puerto Rico, but I'm going to represent the world and push back against tyranny, basically. And I really love that about her. I loved her character. Also, just the writing was super compelling. You can probably see me right now laughing out loud, gasping out loud. I was so immersed in the story that happened to me I think both with Blaze Wrath and with Among the Beast and Briars. I'll be back voicing over that too because I just was not good at reading vlogging this time around. A little rusty. Hi. So I have officially finished Blaze Wrath games was a wild ride oh my gosh I don't know where I expected this book to go but like I genuinely could not figure out what was going to happen next the entire time but in the best way I was always wanting to read more there were so many things and the uh, I my mind is just Blown, and also so many cool dragons and yes it's good y'all two for two and now I'm scared because of, out of all of the anticipated books Among the Beast and Briars was the most anticipated book and you know I just don't know what I'm gonna do if I don't like it you know anyway I love Blaze Wrath games. Totally recommend it. Mwah. Latinx dragons for the win. <laughs> Hi. So it is 4.31 on December 31st. I am still not done with Among the Beast of Briars. I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna read as much of it as I can, and my goal is to finish this before midnight. It's my most anticipated book of 2020, and I wanna read it during 2020, so. Here we go, let's do it. I have a buddy in here. Come here, no bank. Say hi, say hi. Say hi to the book nerds. So the way that I'm doing this is I am reading five chapters at a time. There are 40 chapters in this book. I'm doing a little five chapter sprints and we're gonna get it done. We're gonna get it done. So we're on chapter 11, The Hunt Begins. Hi, it's voiceover Evelyn again here to talk about Among the Beasts and Briars. This book was like all of my fairy tale dreams come true. I loved both Ceres and Fox and how their character arcs complemented each other. I loved the banter between them. There was a brief moment where I was a little concerned. I was like, oh, they're like developing feelings really fast. This is weird. Fuck. <laughs> but I should not have doubted Ashley Poston. She is the best at writing Idiots in Love, and it all made sense by the end. And again, as you can see, I was actually like <laughs> chiding the characters out loud as I was reading. Overall, it was just so enchanting. It definitely did a very good job of balancing out the darker, creepy side of fairy tales with like the magical wonder side of fairy tales. And 
if you're like me and you love fairy tale inspired books, I think you'll just eat this one up. Just um, nom 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 nom. So, I finished it. I was supposed to read five chapters, uh, and then I just, I finished it. <laughs> it just filled the hole in my heart that I knew it was going to crawl right into and fit into perfectly. This is the kind of fantasy that I love reading. And, like, of course Ashley Poston wrote the kind of fantasy that I love reading. Oh, she's so good. <sighs> Hi. Welcome to the super fun data analysis part of the video. So, an explanation, because this is not like standard reading vlog material, but I have been working on my most anticipated books of 2021 videos and making my list for the year of the books that I am very excited about that are releasing that I really want to read. And it made me think, you know, I spend all this time making these lists. I did it last year. How many books did I actually read off of these lists? I mean, at least three, like we all saw me do it just now. But I wasn't really keeping track like throughout the year. So I actually put out six videos in my most anticipated reads of 2020 video series. I went back and compiled all of those titles and there were 72 titles total. If we break that down by genre, it becomes one historical, 30 contemporary, and 42 sci-fi slash fantasy. Six of them were on the list because they were sequels, part of series that I'd already started, and so I was anticipating them because I wanted to continue with the series. At least 31 of them featured LGBT plus main characters. I say at least because I obviously didn't read all of them. Some of the ones I didn't read could perhaps be secretly hoarding the gays. I know there were a couple that I wasn't expecting to have LGBT characters in them that did actually have like pretty significant representation. And so, benefit of the doubt, at least 31, if not more. So in 2020, I read 29 of those 72 books which I am now going to rattle off in release date order, because I don't remember the order I read them in, with a little brief, like, one-sentence description of what's up. Ready? Okay. The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson, aka Truly Devious, book three, in which teen true crime expert Stevie Bell attempts to solve the cold case of the century and also figure out who is behind the mysterious, dangerous stuff that has been happening at the boarding school that she attends. The King of Crows by Libba Bray, aka The Diviner's Book 4. It's the 1920s and these teenagers are fighting ghosts. The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper, aka The Gay Save NASA. Of Curses and Kisses by Sunja Menon. It's Beauty and the Beast, retold in the modern day at a boarding school for rich kids and royals. When We Were Magic by Sarah Gailey, a group of teenage witches has to bond together in the aftermath of murder. Havenfall by Sarah Holland, a teenage girl is put in charge of this inn that sits at the junction between several different worlds and she has to keep a war from breaking out between those worlds. <laughs> and it's fun. Bonecrier's Moon by Catherine Purdy. In order to get their powers, Bonecriers have to sacrifice the love of their life to the gods that they worship. Which is hard when the love of your life kidnaps you and tries to kill you <laughs> instead. Only Mostly Devastated by Sophie Gonzalez. Starting senior year at a new school is already tough enough, not to mention the fact that the very cute guy that you had a summer fling with goes to school there, but he's not out yet, so now everything is awkward. What I Like About You by Marissa Cantor. It's identity shenanigans plus book bloggers plus baking. And it's very cute. The Deck of Omens by Christine Lynn Herman. It's the sequel to The Devouring Grey. 
a bunch of teenagers have to learn to work together in the face of a very creepy magical threat. <laughs> and also, colonialism is bad. By the book by Amanda Sellett. As it turns out, it might not actually be the smartest idea to live your life like you are the main character of a Regency romance. Who knew? Camp by Lev A.C. Rosen. Changing yourself for a man. Gay summer camp edition? It sounds bad, but it's so lovely. My Calamity Jane by the Lady Janies. Werewolves in the Wild Wild West. Also, anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Okay, you get the idea. I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. A teenage girl joins an internationally televised K-pop competition in order to prove to her mother that fat girls actually can be superstars and draws the attention of one of her very famous co-stars. Both the main character and the love interest in this one are bisexual. Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Vasherdost. It's a fairy tale in which the princess is also the monster and the love interest is also the monster and it's sapphic and it's gorgeously written. The Princess Will Save You by Sarah Henning. Sort of self-explanatory, they shouldn't have stolen her boyfriend. More Than Maybe by Aaron Hahn. Two music-loving teens get paired up for a group project at school and neither one knows that the other one secretly has a crush on them and it's very, very cute. Ten Things I Hate About Pinky by Sunja Menon combines both the fake dating trope and the opposites attract trope flawlessly. Today, Tonight, Tomorrow by Rachel and Solomon. Two academic rivals end up having to work together after a group of disgruntled AP students teams up to make sure that they won't win a scavenger hunt and figure out they have a lot more in common than they ever knew. Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston, aka Once Upon a Con Book 3. It's another modern day Beauty and the Beast retelling, but this time it's nerdy as hell. A notoriously grumpy actor meets a fangirl and they bond over organizing a library. The Dark Tide by Alicia Densinka is the epitome of Sunshine Grump because it's a witch queen and the stubborn dancer she can't help falling in love with even though she's supposed to be sacrificing her to make sure that a curse does not flood her kingdom. It's sapphic and I love it. Lobizona by Romina Garber is this very cool combination of urban and portal fantasy. It addresses issues with immigration and it single-handedly made me interested in werewolves again. We Are Not Free by Tracy Chi. You saw how hard it made me cry. Miss Meteor by Taylor K. Mejia and Anna Marie McIlmore. Two former best friends team up in order to win their town's beauty pageant. One of them is struggling to deal with her sexuality and the other is struggling with the fact that she is literally made of stardust. Plays Wrath Games by Amparo Ortiz. You just watched me read. It's dragons and I love it. Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston. You also just watched me read and it has the best fairy tale vibes. The Love Curse of Melody McIntyre is just peak theater kid energy and also sapphic romance. And finally, Cast in Firelight by Dana Swift. The heirs of two kingdoms have been in an arranged marriage since they were children. They also have been in sort of a feud competition between the two of them since they were children. They're about to be reunited for the first time in years, but they actually, instead of meeting, end up going undercover to investigate a crime ring and so falling in love without knowing that it's the other person. It's perfect identity shenanigans and I love it so much. That one actually got pushed so it will be releasing on January 19th, 2021. So all of those books were either four or five star reads for me. There were actually five other books that I started but didn't finish. To be clear though, I did not DNF any of these books. What happened is I borrow most of the books I read from the library and sometimes I just don't finish them before I have to give them to the next person. And since I'd be willing to pick up and finish any of those books, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I did a pretty dang good job figuring out which 2020 releases I was going to enjoy reading. So 
kudos to me. And since 2021 started, I have already read A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey and One Way or Another by Kara McDowell, which means I'm pretty confident that I'm going to get around to, if not all, then most of those 72 books sometime, hopefully in the near future. So I've already released the two most anticipated books of 2021 videos for the first half of the year, and I will be continuing the series probably in June going over releases in the second half of the year that I'm excited for. If you want to keep an eye out for those videos, why don't you click that subscribe button? And if you liked this video, remember to leave a big thumbs up, it really helps me out. I'm pretty sure this year's list is going to end up being a lot longer than 72 books, so you'll have to check back in 2022 to see how well I do keeping up with it. With that being said, my name is Evelyn, I make new videos every magical Monday, and I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye!